guys, it's Tori. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. So I am going to walk you through how to make a um, 3D layered paper cut like image and we're going to go ahead and I'm going to walk you through doing the 3D fairy SVG and uh, I don't know if you guys have ever like tried to do the detailed cut and for some reason it ends up ripping your paper or it just doesn't work. I'm going to tell you some of the things that I did um, that really helped. So um, the first thing I did was I found this cute um, fairy image off of Creative Fabrica and I downloaded it and um, then I just all I did was upload it to Cricut Design Space. So um, let's go in Cricut Design Space and we're going to go ahead and do the project and I'm going to tell you everything that I've done so it doesn't um, rip. Um, the first thing that I did do was I bought a new replacement for my fine point blade and that really number one made a really big difference. The next thing that I did was change the settings and I'll walk you through how to do that. Um, you'll just want to go ahead and click on make it. And I'm going to select on the mat, continue, and continue again. And we're going to go to browse materials. And then on the bottom left, you'll see manage settings. We're going to go ahead and select that. And we're going to go down to cardstock for intricate cuts and select that. And if you haven't changed um, your settings before, I think the typical default um, is 200 for the um, intricate cuts. And it usually says two times. And I went ahead and clicked on edit. And I turned my two times off because I noticed that with the two times, it would definitely tear it because it would go back over it. And if it was already cut, it would just get snagged and rip it. So I turned that off and then I changed the number from 200 to 147. So um, typically they say that you should just go down, um, you know, like maybe five or so um, until and try it and then do it and try it and blah, blah, blah. But um, I did that for you. So <laughs> what worked for me was actually 147. So I don't guarantee it'll work for you, but it might. So um, you can always play around with it and get the number that you need. But um, I think that 200 was a little bit too uh, rough. So I changed mine. So hopefully that'll work for you. So now we're ready to hit card sock for intricate cuts and select the paper that you need. And if you've noticed, my mat is very dirty. And that is a good thing in this case because if it's too clean and too sticky, the cardstock tends to stick to it. And when you try to remove the cardstock, it rips that way as well. So I like to leave one of my mats kind of a little bit non sticky so I can do, um, I can cut the cardstock and it doesn't rip. Um, but we do need to tape all four sides because you don't want the cardstock to shift, move, or anything like that while it's being cut. And now we're ready to go ahead and cut the paper. And we're just going to repeat this um, for each color. Next, you want to turn your mat upside down and slowly remove the cardstock from the mat. And you'll just want to make sure to go slow enough that you don't end up ripping anything um, that wasn't supposed to come off. So uh, just take your time with doing this. And once you're done with that, what I like to do in between, obviously, you have to clean the mat before you place a new cardstock on it. So I like to use the scraper and just scrape that extra cardstock off. And then you'll go ahead and just repeat the process with putting the next color cardstock down, taping it, and just repeating that. 
You may notice that when you remove the cardstock, there are a few pieces that did not come off, but they should be loose enough where you can just use your weeding tool and just kind of poke at it and it should come right off. And you'll just do that for the rest of the cardstock. And then comes the fun part, putting it all together. Um, now we're just gonna go ahead and lay out each paper in the order that it needs to be in. And then you're gonna get some really cool 3D design, which I just think is so cute. And you can do so many different things with this project. You can put it in a shadow box and make a really cool project. So um, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial today. And if so, make sure to hit the like button and hit subscribe if you wanna see more of my videos. And if you are already a subscriber, thanks again for sticking with me and watching my tutorials. And I will see you guys in the next video. So thanks for watching, bye.